One of the many important decisions a cinematographer must make is where to put the camera and how close the camera will be to the subjects being filmed. The distance between the camera and the subject has a dramatic impact on what is being communicated with each shot. A great example to illustrate is the famous three-way standoff in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. In this shot at the beginning of the standoff, the three characters are very small, which de-emphasizes them and puts emphasis on the setting and the spacing between the characters. But as we watch the scene, notice how the camera moves closer and closer to the characters, and how the background and spacing become less important and the small details of each character become more important. This scene is useful in explaining the concept of shot types, which refers to the implied distance between the camera and its subjects. There are five commonly used shot types in film. They are the extreme long shot, the long shot, medium shot, close up, and extreme close up. The extreme long shot sets the camera furthest away from the subjects and is typically used to emphasize setting or establish location. The long shot moves the camera closer to the subjects. Background is still part of the shot, but less important. Characters are typically framed from head to toe, and the action or movement of the characters becomes more important. In the medium shot, characters are filmed anywhere from the knees waist or chest up. Now we can see more detail of the human body and emphasis is placed on characters body language with background becoming much less important. The close-up removes background and fills most of the screen with a face. Now facial expressions are driving the narrative. A close-up can also be used to enlarge an object. This adds narrative significance to that object and signifies that the object will be important later in the scene 
or later in the movie. An extreme close-up enlarges a face so large that only part of it fits within the frame. The slightest movement of the face carries tremendous weight. The extreme close-up is typically used to emphasize the highest moment of tension within a scene. While there are several others that can be added to this list, these five create the basic foundation of shot type choices in cinematography. Typically, scenes will follow a standard progression, starting with some type of long shot at the beginning of the scene, then moving into medium shots, before moving into the close-ups. This progression of shot types, moving from far away to close-up, has become a standard formula in most films. Here's an example. His pockets, okay? Marie, well, why do you go through his pockets? You know what I found? No, what? They just bought a dining room table. He and his wife just went out and spent $1,600 on a dining room table. Where? <laughs> the point isn't where, Alice. The point is he's never gonna leave her. So what else is new? You've known this for two years. You're right. You're right. I know you're right. Why can't you find someone single? When I was single, I knew lots of nice single men. There must be someone. Sally found someone. Well, Sally got the last good one. Joe and I broke up. Here you can see the standard progression that takes us from a long shot, through medium shots, to a close-up. Now that you are aware of this standard progression of shot types, you will notice it all the time in the films you watch. For example, the classic interaction between Hannibal Lecter and Clarice in The Silence of the Lambs begins with an establishing shot before moving into the long shot, medium shots, and then into close-ups. The more Lecter gets into Clarice's head, the closer the camera gets to the characters, ultimately ending with this extreme close-up when Lecter finally gets the information he was seeking. Getting closer to the characters as the tension rises is very common, typically ending with this type of extreme close-up. The same pattern is used during the hypnosis scene in Get Out. Beginning with an establishing shot, the camera then moves closer and closer to the characters as Missy gets more and more into Chris's head during the hypnosis session. You may have noticed the close-up shot of the teacup inserted into the scene. This highlights the importance of the object during the scene and foreshadows the teacup's importance later in the film. So, do all scenes follow the standard shot type progression? Oh, oh, oh no. 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 No, 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 no. No, of course not. In fact, some of the most interesting shot type choices are those that reject this common progression. For example, let's watch another scene from Get Out, when Chris and Rose arrive at her house to meet her parents for the first time. As you can see, it starts off with a standard long shot to establish the location. Most scenes would then cut to a medium long shot as Chris and Rose approach the house, then medium shots when they get onto the porch, and then close-ups as each character speaks. But watch how this scene blatantly rejects that pattern. You call me Dean and you're hungry, my man. How are you? I'm good, how are you? We're huggers. <laughs> yes. My mom, this is Chris. <laughs> Did you feel how odd that was? not having the camera move closer to the characters. And to further exaggerate the moment, the camera does the opposite, moving away from the house and revealing a character ominously looking on. 
This rejection of the standard progression of shot type choices is designed to make the audience feel unease. It's a warning that this house is not welcoming, that we should not go there, and foreshadows bad things will happen in this house. Let's look at one final example of a scene rejecting the standard progression of shot types. The funny guy scene from Goodfellas creates incredible tension between Joe Pesci's character of Tommy and Ray Liotta's character of Henry. Standard shot type progression would suggest that as the tension grows, the camera should move closer and closer to the character's faces, with an extreme close-up saved for the moment of highest tension. Let's watch the scene and see if that happens. This entire scene uses medium shots. By not moving to close-up shots, the reaction of the other characters around the table remain in view and add to the building of tension and ultimately the release of tension. Knowing the various shot type choices will allow you to recognize patterns of their usage, identifying when scenes follow the standard progression and when scenes reject the standard progression. The key is to not just recognize shot types and patterns, but ask, why are they being used? What is being communicated or emphasized through these choices? Recognizing these cinematography choices and interpreting them will provide you with a much better understanding of how the implied distance between the camera and its subject is an integral part of storytelling in film.